Okay, uh, this is Ryan uh, in response to Alan here. Um, I, I, Alan, I, I started to write a response to this like three times already and I got sidetracked all three times. Um, so I'm just, I, I had a, actually a lot of uh, information to convey so I can talk a lot faster than I can type. I thought you'd get more out of it this way. Um, so you asked if there's a way to update other attributes besides the, the source attribute. Uh, so currently no, uh, at least not purely by, uh, via the data attributes, but there is a way to do it using the methods, it, like, you, you know, writing JavaScript uh, using uh, response. Uh, so, and there's actually a pretty, uh, pretty good way to do it too. So I'll show you that. Um, so, so as far as the first way, no, but actually that the ability to do it purely through data attributes, um, I think, I mean, it, it would be really easy to implement that based on the way that everything is already set up. So I kind of have an, an idea in my head how to do that. Uh, and I think what you mean would be like having the, the ability uh, to specify a breakpoint set um, of something like this where this adder doesn't exist yet as a uh, you know it's, it's not supported yet but I think something like this uh, is what you mean so let me know if that's what you mean because uh, I think that that would be the best way to implement that so basically how that would work is if you specify an attribute here then that will override the automatic mode detection of whether it should be uh, a, uh, replacing the source or replacing the inner HTML. So if you specify something here, it's going to look for that attribute and it's going to update those att that attribute and it's not even going to, you know, it's not even going to look to at the source or anything else. Okay. Uh, and then you could write HTML like this line here where you have, you know, your your default one and then you specify another placeholder here that would be for like 481 and up I mean if you had if you wanted to specify you know you do that too uh, I mean I only put the two two breakpoints there so to, that that'll happen anyway but if, if you just anyway figure that out okay uh, as far as the second way Yes, you can do that now. So I'll show you how to do that now, because um, it's. I mean, it's. You probably already kind of figured out how to do it, uh, but let's see. All right, so I have this HTML page. Pimp my form. Okay, so the in case you don't know, uh, for anyone watching, the placeholder text is this hint text that shows up in the form field. So you're typing out the form you're here boom submit it goes to never never land all right um, so that hint text comes from the placeholder attribute which so this is the HTML for that page so it's right here so I've I put two input elements um, and one is like a name one is like an email so I don't know exactly the reason why you want to change the placeholder but I'm guessing that it has something to do with like maybe you want to read some information off of a device um, or something like that but for this I'm just going to show you how to do it based on the size of the viewport whether the you know the width of the viewport okay so I already I already I got it right here so I think that this is bump this up a little bit your this is I'll paste this for you but um, this is kind of like your safest bet right now um, this I have an edge version of response it's good I'm gonna when I post uh, the uh, when I post this video I'll 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 make sure the repo is up to date with that that it has that but in that version, there this method, which has been we've had this method for since the beginning, but it now has an additional capability. So I'll explain that. All right. So 
uh, you know, you have a function here, f function definition here, and it's getting invoked with jQuery and response getting passed to here and here. So this is jQuery, this is response. Now, as far as doing something on ready and on resize, um, well, I mean, just to do something on resize, just to make sure if you do wind, window resize, you know, and function here, that's going to, whatever the, the, the window resizes, it's going to change. Uh, I mean, it's going to call that function. You probably already know that. Um, in response, you can use uh, response dot resize and it will do that exact same thing. So this is exactly equal to this. Um, so, you know, it's kind of like a shortcut for that. Uh, there is another method that's uh, dot action. Now this is equivalent to calling some, uh, this function would get called when the DOM is ready and on resize. That's been there since the beginning, but I honestly, I'm not crazy about, uh, it's, it's rarely super useful because a lot of times you want to do some stuff on ready and then some additional stuff like on when the window resizes. So it's there, it's available, it's like a shortcut. Um, I did have some other ideas for any kind of improving the, the functionality of those, such as like passing, uh, uh, you know, event data, event data specific to the breakpoints and everything to, uh, to uh, those methods. But for now, it's basically just like that. Um, so what I did here, so let me explain this. So uh, this is jQuery. If, you, if you're not using jQuery, I mean, I'm guessing you're using jQuery. If you're using like uh, Ender or something, you know, you have another DOM ready method. It might, you know, might be something like this. In response, uh, depending on the framework that you're using, uh, it takes the ready method from that framework. So if you uh, do response.ready, it will do whatever the, the ready method is from the framework that you're using. Um, so it's kind of just uh, another shortcut. So I'm j I mean, if you're using jQuery, I would just put do it like this. And uh, if you're using jQuery, then this first argument will be jQuery. But either way, it's kind of like a little bit more uh, stable this way because it makes it easier to switch between jQuery and, and something else um, that's compatible. OK. Uh, all right. So first, you find all the elements that are input elements. You could filter this by placeholder if you wanted to. Uh, all right. So now what this line does is, so this is like an array-like object. You could to this store function, you could pass an array of elements. You could pass a single like a DOM element, native element. Uh, you could pass a node list. You could pass a jQuery object. Any anything that's either an element or array-like, basically. Okay. Um, now. Before version 0.7, the third arg argument wasn't really used. Um, so what this would do would, uh, so, th so this doesn't have to be placeholder. This is just like a data key, like it's foo. You know, it's, you're, store you're, you're storing the init content to like the, a data key. And what it so what's happening there in the background is that it's determining whether the element should be like a source attribute changing element or an inner HTML changing element, and it figures that out um, based on what's kind of valid at HTML. And uh, the 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 actual if you want to look at the source. There's there's a function called 
detect mode that uh, if you control F in the source, you'll find it um, where it determines that. But what I did in this edge version is I made it so that if you specify a text value as the third argument, it will, this is like the name of an attribute. This is like the name of a data key that you're storing to. Oh, geez. This is it. So, my data or whatever. Or my dad. <laughs> All right. So, anyway, if you, if you do this, it's going to read the placeholder from that element and it's going to store it to like the elements. There'll be a data attribute on this element that's like data dash my dad equals and then it'll be the co content of the placeholder all right that, 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 that took way too long to explain <laughs> all right <laughs> but the reason you want to store that see if you don't want to do that what you could do basically what I'm doing is going and, and I'm doing this so if you want to go in your HTML and put a data attribute in there initially that will actually save you some JavaScript so you know if you do that for each of them I mean just for this for this example how I how I had it work so so you have place you know the name and uh, you know if you did that but assuming you didn't do that you can do you can do this if you if you did put that in the HTML then you don't need that. And if you're using, and if you, I mean, I'm gonna update the repo to this version, which includes this. But uh, if you're using the older version, you'd have to do something like this. Let me just, I'll leave it here for a second. Um. All right. All right, so then, so it's gonna store that when the DOM is ready. Now, when the window resizes, you're gonna call a different function. You gotta keep this outside of this. Uh, all right, so when the window resizes, it's going to uh, call this function and it's gonna go through each of the input elements and it's gonna call this. So then, if you're familiar, let me just with uh, the the response band method. Basically, it's a it's a boolean. You know, you do if response band zero four eighty, and then that'll be true if the viewport width is between zero and four eighty inclusive. Um, if you omit the the second parameter, then it, well, the first parameter is the min, the second parameter is the max. So it's like a range with, you know, tests for that range. So you could do if response band this, else if another band, else if uh, like that. Uh, so say you, if you just had two, um, so, this, so I'm trying to determine the value to update the placeholder with. Let's see, so I just called it new val and so basically I'm saying if the if the viewport is 481 pixels plus then I'm going to grab that value that we stored here. I I I named the data key placeholder and so this is going to this this lot this right here would be equivalent to Let's hold on. Be equivalent to that. This is probably a little faster. Okay. Um, so if the viewport is 41 plus, we're going to grab that value that we stored. And Otherwise, we're going to go to this some value for smaller screens, 480 and down. Uh, and then if, you know, if, 
if this was if for some reason not set you know i'm going to check it if this will be undefined this will return undefined if it doesn't exist it should exist because we did it up here but just in case so i'm comparing it to null there uh, so if it's not null then it's going to do this it's going to update the the placeholder so uh, this is the 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 each element in the iteration um, some you got to be careful because like if you're using a jQuery it's like uh, key value and the element will be the value if you're using like uh, Bonzo or something it's like value key so but in both of those cases uh, this is the current element uh, all right Okay, so let's see what works. <laughs> All right. So, so I just have the console there, so it's like that. Uh, so, oh, so that's around 481, 480. So once it's if it's below there, and it's doing it just how it's supposed to be. All right, so that is that definitely works. I'm gonna paste that in there so you have it. But I, I think it would be awesome to have something like this capability just built in. Cause then I mean I put here like response create, but you could just put that in in uh, the 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 response the data dash response js uh, and put it in JSON, uh, and not need any additional JavaScript. And I've, I like I look through the sort like I know exactly how to do it. It's it's not going to be a problem to implement that. And I think that uh, the only the only thing that I thought of would be like. So I, I think if you were if someone were to specify an attribute that is not supported on the element that is in the selector, I guess it, I guess in that situation, I'll just stuff it like uh, not do anything so uh, but I'll figure that out but um, that should be pretty easy I've done something similar before so all right so I think that works um, cool all right, I gotta go to sleep <laughs> oh there's one more thing I wanted to tell you so ability to run a function when the breakpoint is crossed. There is a method called the crossover method. I think actually it's in the readme. Oh, okay. GitHub is up. It was down before. I was af I was afraid my browser was going to crash. Right, let's see. All right. So it's listed here. Now, it may be a little confusing, but it is useful. Um, the way it works is when the attribute sets are defined, if internally there's a, there's a property, uh, that it's a Boolean as to whether that set is quote unquote dynamic. Now by dy dynamic, I mean that uh, it needs to be updated when the win when the viewport resizes so if, if if it doesn't need to be updated when the viewport resizes for example like the device width is not dynamic because the device width is is like this physical size of the phone it doesn't change so you resize the window the device width doesn't change I mean unless uh, they come out with a phone that you could physically stretch <laughs> then I don't know what will happen there but for now it's it's not dynamic um, and the viewport with you know the the viewport changes whenever you resize the window or whenever you know you rotate your phone that changes the the viewport size uh, unless it's a square phone <laughs> all right okay so the cross what the crossover does so say if you've defined a breakpoint set with an array of breakpoints, 
whether they be the default breakpoints or not. So, like every breakpoint set is going to have breakpoints, whether they're numeric or not. Um, so whenever a breakpoint is crossed, that crossover method is going to uh, it's going to it's I made a custom event and if you put a function in here it's going to call that function on that crossover now if you just put the function it's going to do all like if you set up three different breakpoint sets it's going to do every it's going to get called for each time each uh, breakpoint gets crossed for each set if you specify like if you've set up a set um, for width as the prop the property um, and you pass width as the second argument then it'll only do the crossovers for that uh, breakpoint set now this method the the okay so the I straightened out a couple other things aside from uh, that that new feature that I meant this this here in 0.7 in 0.8 or 9 what I'm really looking to do is uh, kind of make the event capabilities better but uh, and more uh, like normalized between uh, you know what you can do uh, f whether you're using jQuery whether you're using and like because uh, I, um, I mean you don't always need that like jQuery but it, it, I mean you want it to uh, you want it to work everywhere the same everywhere so one issue that I know of is th this is another issue that I need to tackle is um, I, I, I really have to test this out because you could have many breakpoint sets, but for example, like say, let's say you set up two different breakpoint sets with two different prefixes and, uh, you used with as the prop per vote for both of them. I think that might cause a problem. Cause I, I have that like that. I haven't tested that. Um, cause initially the idea was that you only would have one for each property. So that's something I need to work out, but it shouldn't be that complicated. But for right now you can, you can, te you can mess with this. Um, and it, you know, it should, uh, you know, you'll be able to see, like if you do something like, uh, if you, it will only work if you've set up breakpoint sets. If you haven't set up breakpoint sets, then like it'll never get called. But what you could do is if, if you set up a breakpoint set, just try something like this. Uh, console log viewport viewport width. And so if you do this, um, it'll whenever a breakpoint set is crossed over. So let me, I'll, I'll set one up just so we can test it. All right, so say, just something really basic. So, find it really annoying to type JSON, but I find it really useful to write code that reads JSON. Okay. All right. Prop with, and I'm just going to put prefix. Doesn't matter. We're not, I'm not really going to use the prefix right now. Uh, all right. Yeah, that should be good. If, if you, if you use uh, if you don't specify a break, an array of breakpoints, it's going to go to the defaults, and the defaults are uh, like for 960 grids. So let's see. So this is the same example: unexpected end of input. Let's see. Is this? 
All right. This isn't really that important right now. Freaking quotes. Quote mismatching will kill you. All right, so let's see. So if I change this, is it gonna? No, it didn't work. It's me, it's not them. It's wait, it's me, it's not me. All right, so hmm. In the test suite, this works. I actually, I, I had initially made the, the arg signature like this, but this is crazy if you have like a long function so I actually made it so that you can enter the f those in either order because if you it makes it makes it's much more readable that way but all right let's try it see what I did here See here it's working. Yeah, see here I have it set up and it's working. So anyway, Matt, let's see. Well now I want to know. I don't want to leave him. Let's see. Alright. I don't know. But anyway. I know it works. How does it I, I, I just don't know why that's uh, what I was just trying to do didn't work right there <laughs> okay anyway but I hope so let me know what you think what uh, one of the other things I wanted to ask you is um, regarding kind of like the event stuff if as far as like triggering that crossover event because for example like this would pass uh, if you're using jQuery when you fire an event where there's this event data object that gets passed, depending on, um, you know, that event data object gets passed, except for document.ready. In that case, the jQuery gets passed. Like when, if you do, Ready function. Okay. Then this is jQuery, and in here, this is the document. Like this is the is the is the document. Um, but that that's true for jQuery, but it's not true for every DOM ready method. So that depends on the framework. Same with this. The event in jQuery the and Elo in jQuery and Elo, this will be an event data object. The jQuery one has way more info. Uh, Elo is another Elo is a another library that I wrote. It's basically like bare bones events. It's uh, spelled like this. Elo. So it's it's GitHub.com uh, slash Ryan V. It's one of my repos. So, um, it's jQuery compatible, but it's not, it doesn't handle some of the really intense stuff. Like if it, does, it doesn't do delegation. Uh, it's really aimed to be a bare bones, lo-fi uh, events library. But if, so if you're using that, uh, that would be the same. Cause really, all right. All right. Anyway, I, I gotta go to sleep. <laughs> I gotta I gotta finish this later. Now wait. Let's see. Line two, ready and resize. 
I asked this. Okay, I, I'm gonna put. I'm gonna post this link because it'll be easier than exp you'll, if you read that. You'll it'll exp it'll explain, but it's an important caveat. All right. So anyway, basically, my question was, what type of uh, data? If I if you if you wanna, what type of event or what type of data? Do, would you want to know like I thought about you know if it's a crossover you might want to know whether like the direction is like you're crossing down or up but really I, I I can't really think of that many use cases for stuff like that so I don't know uh, you know it doesn't if it makes sense to really build you know I was just I was just curious because uh, just to see what you would think about that um, all right so hopefully that works I'm gonna post I'm going to post that code here. All right. That's it. Peace. <laughs>